Got our last wall section to put up. We got the other three up last night. Before we wrapped up for the night, it got dark pretty quick. Otherwise, we probably would have gotten this last section up also. You can see, pretty muddy around site. Luckily, a lot of tools these days have rafter hooks on them. DeWalt finally wisened up, put a rafter hook on their saw. these walls on the ground with little effort and we just use the machine to do our heavy lifting just got to make sure you use the right straps that are rated for the weight that you're going to pick up these ones 2400 pounds a piece uh, this wall does not weigh anywhere near that much Great pick. Went up perfect, didn't even have to do much moving. Now we'll go through with the sledge. We'll get them all where we need to have them. Make sure they're down all the way. Bolt them. Drill holes. Boom. Nice, Greg, what are you, 104 for 104? I wish. Oh. Close though. So those brackets get two half inch through bolts. You can see. That's where the strength is. So we always like to build our side walls before our end wall. And that is so, you know, the end wall is usually a lot taller because of the pitch. So it's not as structural as the side walls. And sometimes like in this case, there's a door right in the middle. So that's even less structure. Once we get our side walls, the end wall we will put up, we'll connect them. And then that creates a pretty strong connection around the perimeter and really can't go anywhere at that point. What I'm doing here, laying out my post to be a 12 by 12 door right in here, actually centered with the one on the other end. And these are gonna be some tall posts once I put my extensions on. We got our end walls framing up. What we'll do is we attached everything to this post. We'll stand it up, connect it to our corner post. We'll do that on both sides. We still got to stand up this corner post. And then we will frame in the garage door header, stand it up and connect everything together. And then it's time to put some bracing on this girl and get her squared up as best as we can so we can start trussing. And what we do is we lay them all out at once. So this is one bay. This is up and over the roof from one fascia up to the peak and down. It's 26 purlins. Every two foot we will put this. They will stand on edge. And we will pre-drill these all so that when we get up on the roof, we know exactly where the nails are going. And we don't split any wood. This is all dug fir, which is super good, strong wood. But it cracks. Six foot spacing. So we'll mark one foot, seven foot. 12 foot. Oh, I just messed up. 13 foot. 13 foot. 19 foot. The reason we do that is we'll have a one foot, what? That way we've got a one foot lap on all of our purlins.
waiting on our trusses. So we're gonna come down and get our two corner posts in the front in. And then what we'll do is we will level these walls up and lock them down with some bracing. So when we start trussing, it's where we want it, nice and secure. Trusses. I don't think so, man. Nice stack of trusses. 13? Uh, it should be 14. <laughs> just joking. Got one ply for the tops, though. Yeah, just one place for the tops. Yeah. Yep. That is a tall. Great, we'll be able to fork these, man. That's gonna be nice. Got our trusses showing up. Dropped them out in the yard, so we gotta move them now. We're just gonna take them in two sets here. Gonna hook a couple cables around it, use a telehandler, all while we're under a lot of pressure over here. Homeowners, good. Darn homeowners. Look at that bottom cord. Trying to get some framing in. Now that's just not really long-term framing because this is all gonna be sheeted. The structural skin or diaphragm will gain its strength through the wall sheeting, but more or less for framing purposes, hanging trusses like our construction, it's a cheap way to do some easy framing. I did not bring all 25 of our chains to New York. I am trying to limit the amount of chain usage Save them for our trussing, because tomorrow, that's what we're gonna do, start trussing. 